Uncle Sam presents... Wings to Victory! Attention, Mr. and Mrs. Arthur White, USA. The story of a desperate battle between a fortress and German planes above the North Sea and how Lieutenant Johnny Long, its bombardier, brought the ship home after pilot and co-pilot had been put out of action. Coast, ladies and gentlemen, the Army Air Forces present Wings to Victory, a dramatization of American heroism based on combat reports from the fighting fronts. For obvious reasons, the names of characters in these true stories are fictitious. There is no record that someone has already said this, but surely someone will. Big wars are won by little men. Whether in the pass of Thermopylae or in the midnight skies over the ominous black waters of the North Sea, little men from towns like Tornado, Texas, Grover's Corners, Kentucky, Dogwood, South Dakota. This story concerns a little man named Johnny Long who loved planes and the men who fly them so much that something was bound to happen. Hey, Johnny. Johnny Long, what's the matter? Uh, Getting train sick? No, Dick, I guess I was just daydreaming again. Oh, brother, you and your daydreaming. What you ought to do is get more sleep nights. Yeah, maybe. Hey, what is it with you? No kidding, you go around like a guy in a trance. The girlfriend saw you joined up or something? Haven't got a girlfriend. Well, then... Look, I... Hope you don't think I'm butting in, Johnny. Oh, heck no, Dick, it's okay, I'm just... I suppose you know you're acting peculiar. The other guys have noticed it, too. A couple of them figured maybe you thought you were too good for the rest of us. Me, a next barber, feel I'm too good for that bunch of swell guys? Don't be a jerk. Are you worried, Johnny? Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's what it is, Dick. I'm worried. Worried sick. Mind if I ask about what? Well, I, I don't suppose you'll understand. But you see, ever since I was a little punk, all I've ever wanted was to be a flyer. Now that I'm in the Army and on my way to a primary training field, I'm just so scared every time I think of it, I shake all over. If they wash me out, dicks or help me, I don't know what I'll do. You know what you are, Long? A first-class drizzle puss. A professional wet blanket. Gosh, a college graduate. Read every book there is on flying. Why, you haven't a worry in the world. You'll end up having wings all over your chest. Now, come on, snap out of it. I wish you meant that. Why, you drip, of course I mean it. Any man who wants to be a pilot as bad as you do. Hey, look. We're pulling into town. Come on, Johnny. Get your bags down. Primary training. Here we come. dynamic stability. Long, I see your hand up. Uh, dynamic stability is that property of an aircraft which causes it, when its state of steady flight is disturbed, to damp the oscillation set up by the restoring forces and moments and gradually return to its original state. That's good, Long. Very good. In fact, Long, that's letter perfect. You coming, coming, Johnny? I'll say, come on, let's go. Hey, hey, Dick, look. Huh? What's the matter with Rich? He's always the first one out the door when we get leave. Oh, didn't you know? 
Had his third check ride today. Lieutenant Adamson washed him out. Washed him out? Why, he's a good kid. He flies like the planes are part of him. Yeah, that's the trouble, I guess. Oh. It came too easy to Rich. He got careless. That's a shame. They caught him doing tight turns too close to the ground and buzzing over housetops. Well, let's be getting to town, Johnny. Uh, I, I don't think I'd better go, Dick. Uh, you go on. Go ahead. What in the blaze is wrong with you now? One of them moods again? No, you, you'd better go, Dick. I'm staying here. I got a feeling I'm going to be checked come Monday. Long, long, what's the matter with you? Your work is terrible, just plain raunchy. Come on now, get your head out. Uh, yes, sir, Lieutenant, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. All right, now stop in, snap into it, Long. We'll try those tight figure eights again and watch it this time. Right, sir. Here we go. Were, uh, were those better, Lieutenant? Yes, a little. Now head back to the field and we'll try a spot landing. Yes, sir. I want you to sit down directly alongside that PT-17. Yes, sir. Shall I cut the gun now? Yeah, go ahead and cut her. Is my angle a glide all right, sir? You're taking the check ride, Long, not me. Now take it in and try to set her down easy. I'll sure try, sir. Here we go. Long, Long, kick left rudder and give her the gun. You're ground looping. Well, Lieutenant, was that landing any better? Long, what's the matter with your depth perception? You started to level off at about 15 feet. Oh, I know that, sir, but you And see... that spot landing you tried, the first one. Yes, sir. I haven't seen many any worse. You leveled off too high and your right wing was down. It's just a piece of luck that we didn't ground loop into that other plane and crack up two ships. Well, you see, sir... The I... only thing I see, Long, is that we've given you every possible break and you've shown no improvement. But, Lieutenant, I, I made perfect landings all week. I felt my air work was, was okay. Yes, but it's a check ride that counts. Well, that's just it, sir. Knowing my check ride was coming up, I, I think maybe I was over anxious. Long, a bomber pilot can't be over anxious at any time. Oh, I know it's that, sir. It's a sign sir, of emotional I... instability. That's your trouble. Now, suppose you're flying a combat airplane, or suppose you had charge of a bomber with ten lives on your hands. Yes, sir. It isn't a job for an over anxious man. I hate to say it, Long, but. I'll have to recommend that you be eliminated. Johnny. Johnny, for Pete's sake, will you quit acting like a kid? Stop, will you? You almost knocked my sister's picture off the top of the dresser. Now look, Johnny. Why don't you shut up, Dick? Oh, for gosh sakes. You'd imagine you'd been sentenced to be shot at sunrise or something, instead of being shipped back to civilian life. Other guys have been washed out before, you know. And there'll be more, lots more. You want this tie? No, thanks. Now, see here, Johnny. I told you to quit slamming those drawers like that. Now, stop, will you, before I... Before you what? Why, you ungrateful jerk. After me putting up with you now for almost two months, practically wet nursing you, and you've got the nerve to snap at me. Probably a good thing that did wash you out. Before someone around here forgot we're supposed to act like officers and gentlemen and took you apart. Took me apart? Do you think you could do it, you loudmouth heel, you? I don't have to think about that, mister. I know I can. You self-centered little fool. Now, maybe that'll teach you at least to try to act like a man. Johnny. Johnny, do you hear me? Hey, kid. Kid, come on. Come on, open up your eyes, Johnny. You... Oh, gosh almighty, the kid's hurt. Johnny. Johnny, can you hear me, kid? Uh, what the... Oh, it's you. Yeah. You okay, Johnny? You all right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so. Brother, you, you got a punch like a flying fortress. All, all my teeth in? I didn't knock you out, kid. You stumbled over that chair. Jeepers, you sure had me winging for a minute. Here, hang on to my hand. I'll, I'll help you up. Uh, thanks. Dick, I, I feel like the north end of a shoe going south. No fooling. I'm, 
I'm awful sorry I shot off my big mouth like that. Oh, forget it, Johnny. I have. No, I, I don't want to forget it. I made a jackass out of myself in front of the swellest guy I ever met. Well, we did kind of get along together, I guess. I'm ashamed of myself letting a little thing like like being washed out get me down. Why, why just as you said before, I'm, I'm probably better off knowing I'm not cut out to be a flyer. Oh, now, wait a minute. I didn't say you weren't cut out to be a flyer, Johnny. I just I said know, that... I know. Let it go. Well, so what? I, I guess I can take it. You want to help me drag my suitcases down to the station? Oh, sure. You don't think you're going without me saying goodbye? Come on, Johnny. You got to get that train back to good old Tornado, Texas. Johnny, back on the job, huh? Yep. Didn't quite make it, Mr. Holcomb. You're next, sir. Oh, just once over, Johnny. <clears throat> Trim up the mustache, huh? You bet, Mr. Holcomb. Yeah. Heard from your son lately? Oh, yeah. Just yesterday. Where's he at now, Mr. Holcomb? Still in San Diego? No, he's on a carrier. Being shipped to Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor, huh? Well, that's in Hawaii, isn't it? Yep. A lucky guy. Wings in his chest, brass button, and all those hula hula gals. Oh, I don't think he's so lucky. Not from what he writes. Well, what do you mean? Well, I mean the Japs. Pat writes that most of the boys expect to be at war with Japan before the month's out. At war? Uh, hey, what's the matter, Johnny? You decided not to give me a shave? <laughs> Come on, this lather's drying on my face. Uh, Mr. Martin, would you finish Mr. Holcomb's shave? Uh, finish the shave? Why, why, what's the matter? Plenty. Looks like we're going to be at war soon. And they're sure enough not going to catch this goon with his feet down. <laughs> You say you were in the Air Forces last spring? Uh-huh. Uh, yes, sir. I washed out after seven weeks, but but I want to get back. I mean, well, you see, there's other jobs in the plane besides flying it. You mean you'd like to go back in, but this time to navigator school or bombardiers? Bombardiers, Captain. I know I'll make good at that. I swear I will. Well, Long, I certainly wish there were more men who felt as you do. Well, I... Many of the men who are disqualified for being pilots, <clears throat> largely through no fault of their own... Feel there's nothing left in the Air Forces for them. Uh -huh. That isn't true. Bombardiers, navigators, and aerial gunners are just as vital to the successful operation of a bombing team as the pilot himself. But I guess you realize that, Long. You want to fly in a plane no matter what you do, isn't that so? Yes, sir. More than anything I've ever wanted in my life, Captain. And this time I'll plant those bombs smack into barrels from 30,000 feet if they'll just give me the chance. Yes, sir. This time it's for keeps. <laughs> moment you bombardiers have been waiting for, to plant a real demolition bomb on that shack. Yes, sir, Lieutenant, and I've just got to smack it dead center. Well, don't get nervous, mister. Your record's too good to spoil. I'll do my best, sir. Are we almost on target? Approaching target straight and level. Bomb bay doors open? Bomb bay doors open, sir. Okay to follow PDI. Roger. Uh, a little more to the right, sir. That's it. Thank you. Boy, this is it. Now, if that shack down there was only here a Hito, I'd sure give him the works. Bombs away! I got it, sir! I got it! I blew it all to pieces! I saw it, Long. Nice going. Button her up and let's go. news about a new bombardier for our team yet, Dick? About 40 new ones landed from the States. We'll be getting one through the pool any time now, Buck. Boy, I sure hope so. Oh, that fortress they assigned us is a Lulu. <laughs> I'm telling you, she handled just like a doll buggy. Say, Dick, have you got any ideas about a name for our baby? I don't know. How does, uh, Minnie the Moocher sound? Uh-uh. We might get our gong kicked around. <laughs> what would you think of Donald Duck? Oh, uh, Pete Harrison beat you to that one. Besides... Come on, you're closest, Buck. See who it is, will you? Yeah, sure. Uh, 
pilot named Johnson here. I'm the new bombardier. Well, greetings and salutations, my boy. I'm Buck O'Connor, co-pilot. Well, how are you? Come on in. That's Mr. Johnson over there at the desk with his big feet up. Oh, well, my name's Long, Johnny Long. Dick. Well, now... Why, Johnny Long, you old son of a gun. <laughs> What's the matter with me? When they said Johnson, the thing never tied up in my mind. Dick Johnson from primary. Dick, I'm glad to see you. Say, will you tell me what you're doing back in uniform? Ah, you know what they say. Can't keep a good man down. I re-enlisted. Went to bombardier school. And this time, my friend, I made it. Gee, Dick, it's a small world, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Well, here I am. So what are we waiting for? Let's get that B-17 out and drop a few thousand ponders smack through the roof at Berkdescott. Well, he's an ambitious cuss, this pal of yours, Dick. Ambitious with a capital M. <laughs> you know, he am from Texas. Well, partner, so that's where you all <laughs> hail from, down by the Rio Grande. Did you bring your Mustang along? No, sir, just my eagle eye. Hey, now there's a name for the ship, the Eagle Eye. Say, that's not bad. The Eagle Eye. What, you, you mean our fortress hasn't got a name yet? Well, what's wrong with calling her the Texas Tommy? Texas Tommy? That's a dance. Well, we're going to make those Jerry's dance, aren't we? Now, wait a minute. Look, lads. The name can wait. We can do just as much damage without a name for a while. And now, Lieutenant Long, you better come along with us and meet the rest of your team. As you were, men. Men, our bombardier arrived today. Now this team is complete. I'm not much of a hand at making speeches, but I want you to meet a real officer and a gentleman. Lieutenant John Long. Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Reading from left to right, Sergeant Collins, Patch Linko, Feinhaus, Bates, Le Grande, and Van Hoyten. Boys, Lieutenant Long. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> well, men, I, I don't know about you, but... Talking for myself, I've been waiting a long, long time for this occasion. Now that it's happened, I, I see who you are and see that certain look on your faces. I'm here to say this was worth waiting for. I think we're all going to do all right together. In fact, men, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, boys. That's all. Dismissed. Come on, Johnny. Let's go meet your plane. <laughs> Hey, what are you staring at, Johnny? Just looking up there, up there where you sit. <laughs> Haven't gotten over wanting to fly, have you? No, I guess not, Dick. I... Oh, you're nuts. You know that, don't you? What good would these fortresses be if we were all pilots? All we do anyhow is show for you bombardiers to where you're going, and then, well, you take over. Oh. You boys do the damage, son. Yeah? <laughs> you like to make a fast trade, Lieutenant? Tell you what, I'll give you my job for yours and a hundred bucks thrown in. Now, I know you're nuts. Ever fly one of these babies? No. Of course I... not. Believe you me, these fortunes are nothing like those PT-19s you were flying at primary, Johnny. For you to try a, to fly a B-17 would like be like a kid from a soapbox derby tackling a General Grant tank. Well, okay. But if you were a good guy, which strictly you're not, you'd at least name this crate Texas Tommy. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do with you, Mr. Long. What? You get yourself a Jerry merchant ship or slide a bomb down a smokestack on the Cupworks in Essen, and I'll put your hey, name Dick, on it. Hey, you huh? guys. Look alive, we're wanted in operations in five minutes for briefing. Briefing? You mean we're going out? You'll find out what they mean when you get there. Now, come on, this looks like business. Well, gentlemen, is that clear? Target exit. Departure, 1815 hours. Rendezvous at 7,000 at LT. When you've picked up your fighter escort, proceed at once to your targets. Uh, Colonel. Yes, Lieutenant O'Connor. Uh, the point of rendezvous, LT. Uh, that's over the North Sea, is it not, sir? Yes. And, uh, Lieutenant, it's a long way down to the drink, and, uh, right now it's awfully chilly. <laughs> <laughs> that's very good, sir. That's all, then, men. Good luck. Best of hunting. Yes, sir. Johnny. Remember that offer I made you this afternoon about trading me jobs? Well, how about if I give you 200 to boot? Now listen, you little sprat. But it's a darn quiet and lonesome here in this goldfish bowl. Oh, I'm afraid I'm going to sleep before we even sight the coast of Deutschland. How about it, partner? Just one spell at the controls hey, and I'll... five formations of Messies and Flock of Wolves coming at us from upstairs. All right, gunners, man your guns. Johnny, look alive. 
Maybe this will keep you awake till we get to Bremen. Here they come, Skipper. And here I go. There goes a Jerry, son of a sausage maker, into the drink. And here goes another. Hey, Dick, get a load of that. There goes one messy down like a rocket. Nice going, Johnny. Watch it. It's another one starting to make a pass. It. Hey, Dick, left rudder and get after that maverick. He slid by me before I had a chance to give him a burst. Dick, Dick, what's up? Can you hear me? Dick! Why oh, isn't this in a phone working? Dick! Come in, please. Dick! Johnny. Johnny. I hear you. Come out of that greenhouse. Get up here, kid. Get up there? Well, this is a fine time to take me up on my offer to trade your jobs. You know I can't leave this greenhouse. It'd mean taking off my mask, Dick. Never mind oxygen. Get up here, Johnny. Okay, Skipper. The guy who designed these masks sure never figured on having to take them off over my schnozzola. How, how does a guy breathe without... I, I better get out of here. Richard, here I am. Uh, cheapest creepers. What what in God's name happened? Cannon shell. Got Buck. Clip me, Johnny. I'm about done in. Good Lord. Pilot and co-pilot, both out of commission. And we're... Whew. We're gonna plug in my mask. No time, Johnny. Listen. Listen while I can still talk. Yeah. Yeah, I'm listening. You're about the only one on board who's ever... Who's ever flown it all, Johnny. You gotta... You gotta try to turn that plane around and get it back home. Dick, I... I'm gonna... Pass out without... Oxygen. Drag Buck out of the seat. Put her nose down, Johnny. Lower altitude. Oh, do it. I... I can take... Get... Let me... Get... Hold of O'Connor... Drag him out of the... That's it. I get behind the wheel. Take it down to 5,000 before you pass out. Just... Just push the wheel forward. Yeah. Yeah, push. Push hard. Get me down, Dick. Dick, Dick, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. What's the... What's the matter with those engines? Number two and three engines going out. Cannon shells got them. Pull throttles back quick. Got ignition. Okay. Huh. That, that, that fixed it. Whew. Oh. Breathing better down here, Dick. Oh. Alameda reads 7,000. Now what do I do? He's back on wheel, little Johnny. Try to level her off about 5,000. Okay. Well, the, the nose doesn't seem to want to come up, Dick. Give two good engines more throttle. Now roll back on stabilizer. Where is it? At your left hand control column. Oh, I see it. There. There she's easing up. I, I got it now, Dick. But how do I get this crate turned around? We're, we're still heading away from England. Easy turn, kid. Remember. Yeah. A little left, aileron. The slightest bit left rudder. Like like this? Uh, that's perfect. I'll try to stay awake, Johnny. Tell you what to do. Yeah, yeah. Can you see compass? Compass? Compass, yeah. Yeah, now what? Set course, Johnny. Bearing about 280. 280, check. Okay, skipper, relax. Relax and pray. Cause look out, London, here comes nothing. Dick, Dick, can you hear me? Yeah, Johnny. I, I see a field down there. Now, what do I do? Just cut the gun, stick a nose down, and pray, huh? No. Come back on the wheel a little to slow it down. Uh, like this? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's it. Now let the wheels down. Hey, it's, it's a good thing you thought of that. But how do you do it? That toggle switch on top control column. Okay. There. The indicator says they're down and locked. Now what? Toggle switch for flaps. Let them all the way down. Yeah. That's right. Fair enough. Hang on, son. We're taking the express elevator down. I suppose you remember this is what they washed me out for, Dick. Bad landings. Yeah. I always wondered what I'd do in a crash landing. But now we're all going to find out. Hang on, boys. Hang on. Well, I'll be. Hey. Hey, Dick. Get your head out and open your eyes. We made it. Ready, Dick? All right, hand me the bottle of Coke. Thank you. <clears throat> Beautiful. I christen thee Texas Tommy. <laughs> Texas Tommy. Well, Johnny, you earned it. You certainly did. You know, but you know what I miss right now, Dick? What would make this complete? I'd like to see that instructor I had at primary. The general said he wouldn't trust me to fly a bomber. Lieutenant, I'd leave well enough alone. Only once in every pilot's lifetime comes a day when he sets his ship down so that her wheels just caress the landing strip. And if I were you, I'd quit pressing my luck and hang on to that bomb sight. Till a day comes when you can drop that stick of bomb smack in the center of Berlin. Yes, sir, it's strange how things will work out for a little man who wanted more than anything else to fly in one of Uncle Sam's planes. A few weeks later, General Eisenhower awarded to all three officers of the Texas Tommy the Distinguished Service Cross for unusual and distinguished heroism beyond the course of normal duty. Our Army Air Forces today provide an opportunity for thousands more Dick Johnsons and Johnny Longs to fly and fight in the sky. All young Americans of good health and quick minds are invited to apply now for assignment as Army Air Cadets. Many young men already enlisted in the Army are eligible. Such men should apply for aviation cadet training through their commanding officers. If you are not yet in the Army and are between 18 and 26, you may make application for cadet training through your local Army recruiting agency. You will appear before an aviation cadet board. And if the board finds you are qualified, you will be given a letter authorizing you to volunteer for induction ahead of your turn and assignment to air crew training. If you're 17, you may enlist for air crew training in the Air Corps Reserve. You will not be called to active training until after your 18th birthday. Your local Army recruiting agency can supply full information. Our Army Air Forces need more aviation cadets, men with the spirit and the courage of Dick Johnson and Johnny Long, men who will follow the leadership of flyers like Jimmy Doolittle, General Claire Chenault, and General Ira Aker. Men ready and eager to strike from the sky for their country against the enemy in Tokyo and in Berlin. You have been listening to Wings to Victory, presented by the Army Air Forces. The script was written by Paul Franklin through cooperation of the Hollywood Writers' Mobilization. This war service program came to you from the West Coast. Sergeant Hal Gibney speaking. This is the Blue Network.